Hello everybody. Today I'm going to uh, make a video on how to build some rovers. Uh, as an example here we have a scout rover. I'll teach you how to build this. And then I'm also going to teach you how to build a transport truck. Which is this one. So we're going to go over how to build both of these. And then also how you can convert this into a pickup truck, which is pretty useful for a uh, curable attachment system to be able to carry around some of the parts containers and uh, you know, move some things around that way. So let's go ahead and get started with a new craft. So what I'd like to do for these, um, because we want to be able to save these as a sub-assembly, so we can attach them to a rocket to drop them off on the moon or wherever it is you're trying to get them to. So I have to start off by placing one of these stack separators. Now the reason I do this is because if you just start off with a integral part of the rover as your home piece, then you won't be able to save it as a sub-assembly because you have to have an attachment node. So if we do it this way, we'll be able to use the attachment node from the uh, separator and put it on one of our rockets and then drop it off later. So, to start off with now, we're going to go ahead and grab this modular girder segment extra large. Attach that on the front. And we're also going to attach one of these shorter sections. And then I like to use the Probodyme cube uh, core. Put on that on the very front here. So, as far as wheels are concerned, you can use the Rovemax Model M1s if you like. They're not as heavy duty as the other ones are. A um, little bit slower, uh, but they do get a little bit better clearance, and they stick out on their own, which is kind of nice. Uh, but again, I prefer using these TR2Ls. Much heavier, much faster. Uh, I just prefer them. But the thing about these is they don't stick out nearly as far as the other ones do. So what we're going to do is go back over here to Structural, take some of these girder segments, attach them on the side here. Put this edge snap on so we get it, or angle snap on so we get it right in the middle. And we'll put that, oh, to about here. We're going to do the same thing on the back. On the back, it's very important that this doesn't overlap over our stack decoupler, because that's what we're using for our attachment node. So you're going to make sure that it's even, or even just a little bit forward from the back of our original girder section. And you get some texture fighting there, but you won't end up being able to see that, so it's nothing to really worry about. So now we'll go back, take our wheels, and attach them on here. Do it right about in the middle. Okay, so now we have the very base frame. And what we're going to do is come over to structural, grab a cubic octagonal strut, turn off angle snap, put it right about in the middle, and then put a cylindrical RCS tank on top of that with angle snap-on so that it lines up correctly. There we are. So that'll look a little bit better for our finished product and also provide um, RCS which will be useful in a number of different situations which I'll cover uh, when we get to that point. So to build the base of our vehicle we're going to use these structural panels, the 1x1s and the 2x2s. So we're going to start out by placing two 2x2s, two one obviously in the front, one in the back. And then we're going to grab our 1x1s, turn on symmetry, and uh, lay those down like so. We're going to center them over those monopropellant tanks, and then line these up. Above those, oh, uh, that doesn't seem to be working very well because that joint. Um, 
and we can move back a little bit. Let's try that. There we have it. All right. So now we're going to take the M beam 650 I beam. Turn on the symmetry, and we're going to need a grand total of five of these, one for each of these, uh, each meter. So what I have to do is then take this, attach it to itself like that, copy it over and extend one of them just by one. I'm going to take this. It's kind of important that it be the 2x2. Two two. Uh, it won't mess up your structure, uh, but it'll kind of change the appearance a little bit. Um, so I like to have the 2x2 two two in front. Put that right there on the edge. We'll do the same thing here. And then try to place this one just a little bit inside or outside so we don't get texture fighting in this overlap section. Once that's finished, we're going to go ahead and copy that and close up the front. However, we want to leave the back part open, uh, both for the transport truck and for the uh, utility pickup truck. And as you can see with our wheels here, it lines up pretty nicely. We get just enough wheel clearance. And uh, yeah, it works out pretty nicely as far as the side-to-side -side spacing goes. So now we're going to add some reaction wheels that are going to sit down inside of the frame. And that'll be really helpful in low gravity environments, especially. So we're going to start off just by placing a single cubic octagonal strut. And here in the control, grab an inline reaction wheel. Placing that there. We're going to copy that over once, twice. We're going to take this, we're going to flip it upside down and attach it just a little bit forward from the center of this 2x2. Two two. Try and get as close to the middle as you can. There we go. Same thing here. So we're going to attach it in the middle. There we go. And then this one, the same thing as the back side, so it's going to be a little bit back from the cross. There we go. So now we have our reaction wheels in there. We're going to copy this I beam, rotate that, turn on symmetry, and this is going to make something of like a, a grill design uh, on the front in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to take struts, we're going to connect them across horizontally, and look like a, uh, an air intake like a grill uh, on a truck. But before we do that, we're going to grab this Z400 rechargeable battery, pop that down right here, and then we'll do the same thing with some RTGs, place them here, and here. We're going to have uh, four of them uh, to kind of negate the amount of energy consumed by the, the tires. Of course, alternatively, you can just put solar panels on there, but then if you're on the dark side of something, uh, you of course have power issues, all that good stuff. And then we'll go ahead and grab these one by one panels, turn on angle snap, close up the hole. We're going to take these struts, turn off symmetry, and angle snap, and attach them across. About like, about there should be roughly even. Now it says a bit higher again, but whatever. And then you just copy it, and place it running down here. You have your grill. Then we're going to go to utility, 
grab the Illuminate Mark IIs, you don't want the Mark Ones, because the Mark Ones, if you have more than one, are much too bright. So we're going to take Mark IIs. And we're going to put them right in here. And it looks like I placed the sides a little bit too far forward, or the front too far back. So that's, uh, uh, let's get this back just a little bit. It's not going to be in there. Well, shoot. Okay, hang on. I've got to move these batteries for just a moment. Oh, still too far forward. There we go. Now we can get the full headlights in there. Let's go ahead and move these for just a moment, replace our batteries. And we'll put the hood back on. Very cool. Okay, I often like to cover up this front section by taking a couple of these. Kind of bringing those back, just adding a little bit of a slope to this front part. Doesn't matter so much if it's sticking through a little bit, so it should work out pretty nicely. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to divide the cab from the back of the truck, and we're going to do that using these guys again. Use them quite a bit. If you figured that out already. And then we're going to stack them on top of each other. There we have it. Okay, so next, what I'd like to do is take a rove mate and put it down right here in the middle. <clears throat> this will only work though if you have uh, part clipping enabled. If you have it disabled, then you won't be able to attach it there. Um, so if you're trying to do this without any cheats at all, then I guess you'd have to skip that. It's mainly cosmetic. Um, it adds a little bit of battery charge, uh, but I just prefer to have it in there for the looks and everything. So that's all up to you um, if you want to do that or not. I'm going to go ahead and add it. And then what we're going to do is come in here, grab a cubic octagonal, lay that down. Symmetry enabled. This is going to form the base for our seats. Um, if you have them standing up, it'll be a little bit taller. Laying down, it'll be a little bit lower. Um, but we're going to have a, a kind of a low ceiling, so we're going to have these laying down. We're going to come over here, re enable angle snap, and just place those right on top there. Now we have our driver and our passenger seat. So to finish off the cab, we can come back here, grab one by ones, and you can place them flat. I like to have them just slightly rotated. Uh, it just makes it more visually appealing in my opinion. Uh, this is up to you, personal preference, all that. Then we're going to grab struts, disable angle snap, place it here in, this, in the roof. And attach them to the hood. Same thing in the middle. For the middle, I like to place them just a little bit farther forward. Just again for a little bit of visual interest. Now we have our cab all finished. So at this point, if you wanted to do a pickup truck, all you would really need to do is take some struts. Up oh, there we go. And bring them back to here. You can bring them back however far you want to, or you can just leave them off entirely. Um, I just prefer the look with the struts on here, and adds just a little bit of you know structural integrity. It doesn't, I don't think it makes a huge difference, but 
Yeah. Now, if you're using um, Kerbal Attachment System, you can place some of the uh, attachment points for the containers, you know, one on each of these one by one sections. You can put a grand total of six then back here, uh, which is really pretty nice. What I like to do then also is put a uh, radial winch attached right here. And that way you can also use this to uh, tow things around or pull them around. Or just to connect to transfer, you know, RCS or electricity, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Then you can also go here to utility and place one of these ladders in the back here. So they can climb up into the bed of the truck. When you're dealing with the transport truck, you don't need that because you just have to walk, have them walk up to the side and they can climb into seats. Um, but of course for the pickup truck, you have to have somebody to pick them to climb up in there. And if you're in a higher gravity environment, they can't really jump up in there. So the ladder can kind of come in handy. The last thing that you're going to want on here to, to finish it up is to grab these thruster blocks. Make sure you got symmetry turned on. Place them in the front, in the back, and same thing with these ones. Now we have our fully completed pickup truck. And of course, if you want the wheels to be closer together, because now that I'm looking at it, I did kind of place them far apart. Um, you can you can shift that stuff um, earlier on, or you can just pick up the plates, the base plates and scoot them in because it'll also move the reaction wheels for you. Um, so you can kind of dial it into your to your preference. Uh, but yeah, they're looking a little bit wide, but oh well. Um, as a couple of extras, you can put on uh, Communicatron. Have a little antenna there. And then I really like to have the Illuminator Mark 1 on the side here, because the headlights we put on there tend to be fairly dim uh, and don't shine too far ahead. So I like to put just one on here uh, so that you get the, the brightness and the distance uh, without just washing out everything and making everything just appear pure white and you can't tell what's going on. So there we have it. We have our finished pickup truck. And then to convert it to the transport truck is pretty easy to do. So we're going to start off just by removing these struts. And we're going to go back into structural. We're going to grab this I-beam and place it right about here. It does extend out over the back a little bit, but it's nothing too bad. Um, you can try using the 200 um, pocket edition and then putting together some like micro nodes or something like that perhaps if you wanted to, to try and get it so it lines up perfectly but it doesn't really bother me personally um, so I'm just gonna leave it like that go over the strut connectors I'm going to turn on angle snap okay so those are facing down and try to line them up with these uh, these kind of lips between the, uh, the beams that are placed there. And they connect them straight down onto those. We can do the same thing two more times. Or here. And here. There we go. Before we close up the top, I'm going to come over here and we're going to copy the seat and make sure you grab that keep it compactable strut as well. And just going to place the one on the end here first. And the one on the opposite end. I'm going to try and place one roughly in the middle. 
that there should be good. And then just fill in those gaps. There we go. That's pretty good. So yeah, you'll be able to carry 10 Kerbals in the back here. And then of course two in the front. And the whole thing has a uh, a, dro a probe core in here. So you don't actually need to have anybody. So you can move 12 and then you know, go back and pick up another set of 12. Works out fairly well. Then we're going to close up the top using these 1x1 one one structural panels. And make sure to turn on uh, angle snap. And so these are taking the round. Now if you do it right in the middle, uh, it lines up, but it's a little bit high for my taste. I prefer to have it a little, a little bit less of an angle. So to do that, you just drag it back just a little bit and then bring it down so it connects again. That's a little bit better in my opinion. So copy that over three times. have it. So I like to make this look a little bit more interesting, this section right here, this gap, by taking some struts and then starting here, connect up over here, and do the same thing in the middle section. Except have this one be crossing. And then have the back one slope down. That just kind of reinforces it a little bit and adds a little bit more uh, visual appeal. It makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. And with that, you've finished the transport truck. And again, same thing I said before about the wheelbase. It's a little bit spread, but uh, you can tighten that up if you want to. Now in this middle section here, you can add some science equipment or something like that. You know, just some of the small stuff, nothing big. You know, put on you know the accelerometer or the temperature, the thermometer rather, or the gravioli detector. Um, you know, and, and use that in different environments. Uh, the Scout, though, that we're going to do in just a moment has all that stuff on board. So, you know, if you want to have a dedicated vehicle for that, dedicated rover for that, uh, that's kind of a better way to, to go in that case. But, you know, the more flexible your stuff is, the better. You know, use it in more situations. So, as for the Scout, what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside for just a moment. So you can still kind of use some of that stuff. And these parts, you just go ahead and get rid of them entirely. So the Scout's going to be a fair bit shorter. So we're going to go ahead and bring this stuff in. And remove this extra segment right here. Right about there, I think it's about centered. No, oh, that's too far back. There we go. Okay, so let's bring this back up over here. Make sure some tree is off. So I want to place it. Well, it doesn't work with me, so we'll just start over with that. No big deal. So for this one, we're going to have it be um, 4 meters long instead of the 5 meters long that the previous one was. So we're going to go here to Structural, grab this 2x2 two two section, lay it down, about the middle. What is it doing? There. Hmm. 
just not wanting to attach at all. That's really weird. Okay, let's try that. Okay, well it seems to have become bugged. Uh, bear with me for just one second here. Okay, so I had to uh, exit out of the uh, space pen assembly hangar real quick and come back. Okay, so as I was saying before, you take one of these, lay it down, attach that right about in the middle. Same thing on the other side, of course. There we are. Now we have the base for our scout. So last time we took these, and we needed five sections. Well, since this is shorter, we only need four sections. Take that, line it up with the front. Not too far forward this time. Same thing here. Line it up with the back. Again, you want to be just slightly farther inside or outside so that you don't get the flickering of the textures right here. Close up the front. And... Place the parts for our engine. So I'm going to replace these batteries. Replace the RTGs. And close up the hood. There we go. We're going to place those headlights again. Build the grill. It's a little more level this time. Again, by alt clicking to copy it, each time it places it exactly the same way, so it makes it completely parallel. Then I have to worry about the spacing. So now that we have that, I'm going to place this front part. Right there. Okay. Now, since we here, this is going to be more of a Jeep. Uh, we're going to close up this back part. Now let's go ahead and take care of our seats before we put on the roof and everything. Now for the Scout, the roof tends to be a little bit higher than the other one was. So if you lay down the cubic octagonal struts, it's going to... the seats are going to appear kind of low. Um, so I prefer to have them standing up uh, on, the, on the Scout. So place those seats. Copy them back. And before I forget, I'm going to place those reaction wheels. Copy that back. Flip it over. This we're going to want to place fairly close to the middle of the 2x2. Two same thing up front. And again, if you want to, placing that roof made in here. 
Okay. So now we've pretty much finished up the internals. There'll be some things back here, but we can't place those until after we have the roof on. So we're going to go ahead and start on that next. And for that, we just need these one by one panels. Turn on angle snap and symmetry. I'm going to build those up until they're three high. Then I'm going to put them on the sides here. And for this first one, I'm going to have them in just a little bit. So I'm going to make it so that the outside edge of them is farther in than the outside edge of this ID. So you can kind of see there, there's a little bit on the inside, and that's exactly how we want it. And this one we want to be right on the edge. So that's just a little bit farther out. In fact, we'll probably get a little bit more distance on here. There we go. So then what we're going to do is grab this top section. We're going to want to rotate it 45 degrees. So we're going to hold down shift and press S nine times. A little bit of a lag there. I wonder if that's right. Let's see. Nope, it skipped one. One more time. There we go. If you do it properly, they'll line up like this. So this line will be completely horizontal. This one will be vertical. And it should line up with this diagonal line on this um, this plate. So we're going to do the same thing with the bottom section after that. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So it gives you your 45 degree angle kind of Hummer sort of look. So now we're going to do like we did before with closing up the cabin with these struts. One set here, connect them to the hood. Another set here, again connecting to the hood. So you can kind of see what I was saying as far as the roof being higher up. So that's why I like to have those struts standing up in this case, so that they're a little bit higher Otherwise, it just seems out of scale, so it works out just a little bit better this way. So now we're going to put on our RCS blocks before we forget. Now, the advantage of the Scout is that it's got some science stuff in the back, so let's go ahead and place that now. Grab another one of these keep it octagonals. Symmetry disabled. Come up here to science. Take this guy. For now, he's facing backwards, but I'm going to take this, flip it over. On the inside, it'll be facing forward. And we're going to place this as far back as we can. And we don't want it to clip through the back. So right there should be perfect. But as you can see, we still have enough space for these seats, um, even with that science uh, container right there. So then we're going to take Mr. U, and we can place it right here around about in the middle. Or you can place it on the floor here and turn it sideways, but it kind of crowds those seats, you have to move them. So I just like to put it right up here. And then we can place our other science instruments. Put on our communitron. You can put it here, or you can put it in the back if you want to make it look more like a uh, Real Humvee, I believe they have their uh, antennas in the back. Of course, usually they're bent upwards, but you can't do that here. And then grab our Lumitron Mark 1. Mark one. And put that right here on the side. There we 
go. Now, if you want to, you can also go over here to Structural, grab this real decoupler, and rotate it upwards a bit. It then looks kind of like a bumper, I don't think turn it too far. There we go. And it's a little bit of an angle, but you get the idea. Do the same thing then on the back. On the back, I'm gonna make sure that you don't do it too low, like right here, because you're kind of covering up our um, our stack separator. You're gonna make sure that anything you put on the back is clear of that. So we'll put that like up here. There you go. Now we have our scout. Let's go ahead and give that a test. All right, so I prefer to drive in the docking mode here. I'll show you why. So you're driving along, and first off, since we have those four RTGs, you see our electric charge is remaining about the same. So you can go very long distances in this, you know, even with the lights on and all that kind of stuff. It works out pretty well. But let's say you're climbing up a, a steep incline and you need a little bit of a speed boost. So right now we're traveling at about 23 meters per second. If we turn on our RCS right now, that'll boost us up a little bit. Now, it won't make a huge difference when you're just going flat like this, only about a meter per second or so. But when you're in a low gravity environment like the moon, and you're going up a steep hill, this will really make a, a pretty significant difference, um, even if you are just driving flat, because you have much less um, force pushing you down therefore much less traction, so you don't accelerate as well, and it just works out a lot better. Um, one thing about these tires, though, is if you do use the brakes, if you didn't know, it's very easy for them to flip you out like that. Um, I kind of pumped them a little bit so I wouldn't actually flip over. But if you just hit them and hold them, uh, you're likely to roll over onto the top of the rover, and that's, you know, suboptimal. <laughs> So you gotta be careful of that. Uh, but these wheels work out pretty well. Um, they have better impact resistance than the other ones do. They have a higher top speed than the other ones do. And uh, I think they look better. Uh, so yeah, that's my tutorial on building rovers. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.